G'day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. We're gonna talk about the four methods to bleed your brakes. We've got a 2010 Silverado. We just replaced the brake light and we're gonna bleed the brakes. The first method, someone's in the cockpit, they press the brake pedal to apply pressure, and someone cracks open the bleeder valve at the wheel cylinder or at the brake caliper. And when fluid squirts out, then they close the bleeder and the person in the cockpit releases their foot pedal. You do that enough times, generally you'll get the air out. So I pumped my pedal and I've got a really hard pedal. And now I tell my partner, go ahead, crack open the brake bleeder. And you will feel on the brake pedal, it release, it go to the, there it goes. Closed. You're closed? Yep. So I released my foot pedal. Now we'll do that a number of times until the foot pedal gets really firm. If that doesn't work, we'll try the vacuum brake bleeding method. Second method is using a vacuum brake bleeder like this. You put that on the end of the brake bleeder, you crack the brake bleeder, put a vacuum on the line and it will suck the air and the fluid through the line. All right, so with the hose on the brake bleeder screw, crack the brake bleeder screw open and we'll draw fluid through using this method. The third method, this is a homemade brake pressurizer. It has gauge in it, so we know we won't go over 30 PSI. Over that, you might risk damaging the master cylinder reservoir. You've got a cap that goes on the reservoir. And when you pump it up, you pressurize the system. When you crack open the brake bleeder, pressure will drive fluid through the whole system, fluid and air, and then close the brake bleeder when you're done. For about 50 bucks, we built this contraption. We got a pressure sprayer, We've got some line that actually came with the pressure sprayer. We got a T and an air pressure gauge here. 30 PSI is at the top and you can screw this cap on to your master cylinder and pump up the pressure and then crack the bleeder screw free and you'll watch the pressure drop on this slowly and it will push fluid through the whole system. Those methods were moderately successful on this truck but it has an ABS module and that generally requires the use of a scan tool to cycle the ABS pump to get any air out of the ABS unit. So that's what we're gonna do next. And the fourth method is... So I've got my Xtool IP819. I will go into special functions. I will go into ABS bleeding and I will pick America's GM. Okay, we pick automated bleed and it says, connect the required brake discharge equipment on the brake caliper, lift and support the vehicle, Check the charging status of the battery. You know the battery is up. Turn the ignition on and turn the engine off. So turn the ignition on and don't start it. That's the state we're in right now. And it's telling us to open the left brake bleeder and pump the brake pedal repeatedly. Are you ready? Want it open? You go ahead and open it. Okay, close the bleeder. Yep. All right, we've done one corner. So we're gonna repeat that four times. Okay, I'm ready. So in theory, only one method would be required, but some vehicles are really stubborn. And if you have a line, like a flex line that's collapsed a little bit, or maybe a kink that you don't necessarily notice, it might be harder. Now, obviously you want to resolve those problems, but if you do all of that and you still get a vehicle that you can't get the brakes bled very well, you can't get fluid to pass through it, you may have a hydrolocked master cylinder or ABS unit, and you may need to use multiple methods to flush the fluid we actually had to use two methods at the same time abs bleeding and a vacuum gauge to get one of the wheels to start to purge the, the fluid through so that's a review on four methods and if you like my videos please subscribe and i hope this helps you out give me a like if it does see ya